Hi, this is Miss Amy. It's week four of our Imagine Your Story summer reading program. And today I'm here with the Mighty Munchkins for your story time. It's really nice to see you guys and I hope you're having a wonderful summer. So today we're gonna to start with our The More We Get Together song and then I have another song I'm gonna sing with you a little later. Help me sing. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. So today, we're going to read and talk about two magical creatures, mermaids and unicorns. So Patterson Library doesn't have too many unicorn books, but I do have a nice unicorn song to sing for you. And there are some unicorn books available through some other libraries in our system. I'm going to look at that and maybe get a good unicorn book or two for the younger kids. But I do have some mermaid stories. And this book is called The Unicorn Treasury. It's a little bit older, but you might enjoy reading some of the stories and poems that are in it. Or if you have an older brother and sister, they might read those to you. I also have a story called Sarah's Unicorn. It doesn't work real well for our story time because the pictures are a little bit small and black and white. But this one is one that you really would enjoy. So if you're coming to the library or doing curbside pickup, you can ask to check out Sarah's Unicorn. Now the first story I am going to read to you today is actually not about a unicorn or a mermaid, but when we did our dragon story time, I didn't have this book. It's called, There Was an Old Dragon Who Swallowed a Knight. I'm gonna sing it to you and you're gonna know the tune right away. So please enjoy this dragon story and then we'll do some mermaid things. There Was an Old Dragon Who Swallowed a Knight by Penny Parker Klosterman and the illustrations are by Ben Mantle. There was an old dragon who swallowed a knight. I don't know why he swallowed a knight. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. Oh, how the dragon wished it would stop that clippity-clippity-clippity-clop. He swallowed the steed right after the night. I don't know why he swallowed the night. Sing it with me. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a squire who hollered, That's hot! When the dragon breathed fire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. He swallowed the steed right after the night. I don't know why he swallowed the knight. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a cook, a savory cook in his recipe book. He swallowed the cook to fatten the squire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed. He galloped, he galloped around at a terrible speed. He swallowed the steed right after the night. I don't know why he swallowed the knight. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a lady. It seemed quite shady, he'd swallow a lady. He swallowed the lady to rule the cook. He swallowed the cook to fatten the squire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed. Galloped around at a terrible speed. He swallowed the steed right after the night. I don't know why he swallowed the night. It isn't polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a castle. Swallowed it down to the last golden tassel. He swallowed the castle to hold the lady. He swallowed the lady to cook, rule the cook. Swallowed the cook to fatten the squire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at terrible speed. He swallowed the steed right after the night. I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a moat guzzled and gulped it right down his throat. With all of that water, he started to bloat, and that's when the dragon roared, and I quote, Okay, enough, I've had enough, more than enough of this swallowing stuff. Maybe I've been a tad impolite. Perchance I should only have swallowed the night. 
So he burped out the moat that caused him to bloat. He burped out the castle along with the tassel. He burped out the lady who found that quite shady. He burped out the cook and his recipe book. He burped out the squire now blackened with fire. Then with all of the power that he could amass, the dragon burped out one last billow of gas. Burp! And with terrible speed, he burped out the steed. Clippity, clippity, clop, clippity, clippity, stop. Ah, there was an old dragon who swallowed a knight. Ah, just right. Good night. That's a crazy dragon story, but I hope you really enjoyed it. Now I have another story about a dragon and a knight. It's called Sunflower Sword. I'm not going to read this one. It's written by Mark Spearing and Miriam Latimer, but it's another fun one that you might want to read this summer. There are so many fun imaginary stories, and we have many at Patterson Library. Another one that I'm going to show you is called the Tiniest Mermaid. And I especially like this one. It's written by Laura Garnham. And I love this one because it has something kind of special on it. The illustrator made some of the pages a little bit sparkly. Whenever you see the little mermaid in this story, you'll see that her scales on her tail sparkle. Well, that's a good shot to show. So when you read this, make sure you take special note of the sparkles. Look at all of them on this page. So this one will be here at Patterson Library. You can check it out whenever you'd like to. It's called The Tiniest Mermaid. We have two activities I'm gonna share with you today, so I'm only gonna read one more story. Another one that I'm not going to read is Sophia the First, which you may know the TV show. This is called The Floating Palace. And of course, there are some mermaids in it. So you might enjoy that one. And the one I'm going to share with you is by Jan Brett, who's one of my favorite authors. This one is called The Mermaid. This story will be quite familiar to you when you hear it. Look at the end pages. It looks like all sorts of undersea bubbles or maybe mermaid scales. Hmm, let's see when we read it. Under the sea, an octopus family got ready for a swim before breakfast. Time to put on your new hat, baby, said Okasan. Baby did not like the floppy new hat. The hat was not happy either. As the octopus family set off behind their house, a little mermaid spotted their front door. Kiniro had been drifting in a warm current with her puffer fish friend. Take care, puffy warned. You never know who may live there. But I'm so curious, said Kinero. She sashayed toward the seashell house. There go the octopus family off for their walk. Inside, breakfast had been set out. There was a great big shell, a middle-sized shell, and a little shell. Kinero took a bite from the great big shell. Too crunchy, she said. Then the little mermaid tried the tender bites in the middle-sized shell. Too slimy, she said. Puffer could guess what was coming next. Canero sidled up to the little shell, and in a minute, the tempting tidbit had disappeared. Mm -mm, just right, she said. All gone, said Puffy, as he wondered whose breakfast it really was. Canero floated around the seashell house and saw three chairs. There was a big chair, a middle-sized chair, and a little chair. Now, like Jan Brett does in many of her stories, there are some smaller pictures on the sides that show the octopus family out on their walk. So when you check this book out later, you'll be able to see that up close. She sat down on a large coral chair. Too many bumps, she said, as she smoothed her scales. Kinero wiggled onto the middle-sized chair, and down she went. Oh, that chair's too slippery, she gasped. The little chair was the prettiest of all, and Canero sat on it. Just right, she said. <coughs> Excuse me. She gave her fins a flipperty flip. All that wiggling broke that chair to bits. Canero was sorry about the pretty chair, but not for long, because in the next room she spotted three beds. 
She and Puffy had been swimming for hours, but they were ready for a nap. She swam over and settled in. What sweet dreams I'll have, she told her friend, but someone had been eating in the big bed and there were smashed shells and crab claws. This bed is too messy, she sighed. She flopped down on the middle-sized bed. This bed is too squishy, she complained. As Canito patted her tiara, she spied the last small bed. Rocked like a cradle in the tide. She set her head down on a pillow and fell sound asleep. Soon, the octopus family returned over the sandy shoals. Right away, Otosan saw his breakfast shell overturned. Someone has been crunching on my crustaceans, he said, turning pink. Okasan huffed, my breakfast has been splashed. She turned pinkish too. Baby looked around for her breakfast, but all she saw was the upside down shell. Someone has been eating my breakfast and there is nothing left for me, she cried. Otosan saw his coral chair look different. Someone has been sitting in my chair, he announced now even redder. Okasan went from pink to red when she saw her chair. Who has been squashing my chair and scattering my teacup, she asked. Baby saw his chair all in pieces. The hermit crabs were taking it. My chair is going, going, gone, she cried. Sensing something else was amiss, Otosan squeezed into the bedroom. Someone has been sleeping on my bed. He pl blasted ocean water and kicked up the star-shaped sand. Puffy felt the ripples of Okasan jetted toward her bed. The soft seaweed she liked to drowse in was tangled and torn. Someone has been sleeping in my bed, she said. The baby octopus peeked inside her tiny bed. A beautiful mermaid was sleeping there. Someone has been sleeping in my bed and here she is. The little mermaid opened her eyes and saw the adorable octopus. The baby's eyes were soft and sweet. Her shell was pink. Her skin was shell pink and her graceful arms danced. She was wearing the oddest hat that the mermaid had ever seen. Now you may have noticed that her hat looks like a ray, an animal from the ocean. Canero, who didn't like to see anyone happy, gasped, that will not do. She thought about her beautiful tiara. Just then, all three octopuses reached for Canero with their 24 arms. Puffy was ready. He puffed with all his might. Puff a puff a pokety pokety stickety stick. His sharp prickles did not let the octopuses near the little mermaid. Canero, Puffy, and their new friend Ray swam away in the warm current. They couldn't stop smiling about the baby octopus. the baby octopus looked radiant in her beautiful new tiara. So I'll bet you recognize where that story came from. Came from the same story, the three bears and Goldilocks that we've heard before. Two other mermaid books I have are Mermaid's Sister and Julian is a Mermaid. Both are great mermaid books here at Patterson Library that you might enjoy reading. Now we're going to shift a little bit and I'm going to move up. Oh, you know what? I didn't sing my unicorn song, but I've put the words to if you're a unicorn and you know it into your goodie bag. This week on Wednesday, today, right after story time, we will have goodie bags ready for you. They'll have all sorts of um, sheets of things we've done, book lists, some um, um, instructions for the activities we're going to do and other things from work three and four. So I'll sing the unicorn song with you, but I'm not going to do all the verses. I'm going to do two. I'm going to do the first verse and the last verse, and then you'll have to see the middle verse when you get this. If you're a unicorn and you know it, gallop around, clop, clop. If you're a unicorn and you know it, gallop around, clop, clop. If you're a unicorn and you know it, then your horn will really show it. If you're a unicorn and you know it, gallop around, clop, clop. Now, of course, you can gallop all around your room. This is my favorite verse, the last one. If you're a unicorn and you know it, sneeze some glitter, hi If you're a unicorn and you know it, sneeze some glitter, hi If you're a unicorn and you know it, then your horn will surely show it. 
If you're a unicorn and you don't know it, sneeze some glitter. Hi, choo! So I hope you'll enjoy that song and you can do it at home for the rest of your family when you pick up your goodie bag this week. Now we're gonna move over to our activity table. Mr. Austin's gonna shift the camera and we're going to do two cool things. First, we're gonna make an ocean in a bottle and then we're gonna make a rainbow in a jar. You can do both of these at home. Most of the things that I'm using to make them, you probably have Whoops. <laughs> Whoops, that's okay. There you go, you got a picture of the bench. <laughs> Most of the things that we use, you probably have around your house. And if there's something you don't have, you may be able to borrow it or your mom may be able to get it from the store, or your dad or your grandma or grandpa. So the first thing we're gonna do is make an ocean in a jar. This one's pretty easy. If you have any kind of jar or bottle or anything at home, baby food jars work, that would work to make this in. You'll see the few things you need. All we need is a little bit of sand. So if you have a sandbox, you can use that. Move these books out of the way so you can see everything. And you need some water. We all have that in our houses. I happen to have some glitter here at the library and that's kind of fun to add that you don't have to. I also have some seashells that I had around and if you don't have any at home, down at Lake Erie you can find some of those little teeny seashells or maybe some pretty rocks. You just have to make sure they're small enough to put them in whatever size bottle you're using. And the last thing I got was some little mermaids and other little ocean creatures. And I got these on Amazon, but if you come into the library when you're picking up your bag and tell us that you want to make an ocean in a bottle, we'll give you two or three of these little things in your bag to take home. I'm not going to put them in the bags unless you ask because we'll use them here at the library another time if we don't use them all up. But if you ask for them, we'll put some in your bag when you pick it up to take home. You can just ask Joni upstairs or one of the helpers downstairs here at the library. So I'm gonna use this Gatorade bottle. And the first thing my directions say to do is put some sand in. So I have some sand and I didn't bring a funnel. So I'm just gonna put some sand in my bottle for the bottom part, however much you want. I put about an, three quarters of an inch or so in the bottom. And then my directions, and you'll get these two, tell me that you can put in whatever little seashells, mermaids, whatever you have. So I'm putting in a little starfish. I have a, a mermaid tail and a little mermaid, a little fish. I'm not sure what that little creature, oh, that one may not fit. Maybe I can put them in, oh, yep. Yeah. And another little sea creature. So I'm putting those in. I have my sand and I have whatever little shells or toys I want to put in there. And then a little bit of glitter. And I thought since it's oceany, a little bit of blue glitter would be pretty. But when I think of mermaids, I think of green. So I'm gonna add a little green glitter too. Again, if you don't have glitter, you don't have to put that in. If you have some sequins around or anything like that, you could add that too. Now, I'm gonna fill it about halfway with water have more than I need here, I think. Pour it in kind of carefully. That's good. I'm going to add, oh, what color of food coloring should we put in there, do you think? I'm guessing blue to make it look oceany. Little drop, one drop will probably be plenty. Oh, that's pretty. I like watching the food coloring disperse in the clear water. It's kind of cool. And lastly, I'm gonna put in some cooking oil. I don't think it really matters what kind you use. Oh, didn't open it ahead of time. There we go. Because that gives that really cool oceany effect. And then, now this is something your grown-ups might really wanna do. You might wanna put some glue, hot glue or Elmer's glue or any kind of craft glue on that lid before you screw it on because you don't want that to come off. And there's our ocean in a bottle. Now what I'm gonna do is shake it up a little and then we'll watch it a minute. And the sand should always go down to the bottom. 
with the little creatures and things. The bluish water, which is a little greenish because of the um, yellowish oil, will be the next layer. I'll do it this way. And on top will be the oil. Now it looks like my little toys maybe got buried in the sand a little, so I may shake that around a little bit later. But you then have an ocean in a bottle. You can pretend a big storm comes and some big waves. And you can, oh, there's some of my little creatures and the little mermaid. So you can make your own ocean in the bottle at home. So that's our first experiment, craft, activity. The next one's going to be the rainbow. And this rainbow, mine's going to be in this jar. It's a spaghetti sauce jar. But if you have, I looked around and found some other cool jars. You could do it in almost anything you'd want. A water bottle works fine. Any kind of jar. You will need a lid and you will need it to be tall enough that you can see the different layers because we're going to have five layers in our rainbow bottle. Now, I'm sending the directions home with you so you'll know. But the first layer, what I did was marked my cups. I know about this line on the cups is going to be a half a cup. So instead of using a measuring cup, I'm gonna pour them into these cups. So I'm going to put about a half a cup of corn syrup, and you can also use honey. So whichever one you have at home, I'm gonna put that in the first, and I'm gonna add one drop of blue food coloring and one drop of red. And I'll bet some of you will know what's gonna happen. Whoops, I got two drops of red, but I don't think that'll hurt. I think some of you might know what's going to happen when I stir that together into that corn syrup. It's going to make a lovely shade of purple. Oh, that's really pretty. I'm going to stir that up a little, and I'm going to pour that into my jar. Now, the trick with this, I'm going to try that one to go right down the, the middle. But then after that, so it doesn't stick on the sides. Corn syrup and honey are very sticky. The next layers though, I'm actually going to purposely pour down the side so they don't mix together too much. Now I've done this before, but it's been a while. So I'm hoping all my layers separate properly. If they don't, we'll just try it another time. So there's my purple layer. The next layer is going to be blue. And that's an easy one. We're just gonna use blue dish soap. This is the one thing I'm not real sure about because I didn't try it with this particular brand of dish soap. So I hope it stays separate from the next layer I put on after. There's about a half cup of dish soap. Now this time I'm gonna to try to pour it down the side more than just. pretty cool. Yep, it stayed separate from the purple. I can see the purple layer, now the blue layer. The next layer I want to make green. So I have my half a cup of water. I'm going to add two drops of green food coloring. Pretty. Let's stir that up a little bit. And remember to bring a few different spoons so I don't mix colors with my spoons. Let's see how that one works. And I'm going to pour it a different spot than my green. And sort of let it go down the side. Now this is the one I hope doesn't mix up too much with the, I mean with the blue. If they just mix together, it's not the end of the world, but it would be nice if they stay separate. And they did. We got purple, blue, green. Anybody want to guess what's going to come next? Next we're going to do yellow. And we're just going to use the yellow oil. We're not even going to mix it with anything. Now if you had yellow food coloring you probably could do that and make it even a little brighter yellow. Let's see. Do I, have that? I don't think I have any yellow food coloring. No, so we're just going to put the oil down very carefully down the side. It should definitely float on top of the water because oil always floats. Oh, that's good. That's going to divide out a little bit. And lastly, the last color I need to make is with some rubbing alcohol. And I need to make this one red. So we're not gonna have a real, real orangey layer. We're gonna have a reddish layer, but I think when it goes from the yellow to the um, red, it'll look a little orange. Get about a half a cup of alcohol. This stuff's like gold right now, because we're using it. 
clean with too. Uh, we're gonna use some for this and I'm gonna put you know, two drops of thread in there. If you get an extra drop or not as many drops, that doesn't matter. And we'll stir that one up. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit more. I'm gonna make that a little brighter. And let's see how our rainbow in a bottle looks when I get all the... It's not a very sunny day today here at the library, so I think if the sun were shining through, you... Uh-oh. I hope that separates out. I got it a little bit mixed, I think. Okay, that looks good. We're going to give that a minute. My alcohol mixed a little bit with my oil, but I think that when we let that sit, and I'm going to put my lid on, Pretty sure it may take a few minutes. I think if I let that sit, you see that pretty well, Mr. Austin? I'm pretty sure this red, it got into the bubbles in the alcohol, but I'm pretty sure in about 10 minutes that will divide out. So I've got purple, blue, green, yellow, and red and they did they did mix a little but i'm pretty sure that'll divide out over the next little while so there's your rainbow in a bottle and i hope you can enjoy making those at home again your directions will be in your book bags that have lots of goodies in them there are a lot of good things there are some tattoos in there this week we put a couple more bookmarks lots of um words and books to things we've been singing and doing and a few experiments that you can do at home so we hope you'll really enjoy that. We're probably gonna put a few things in from the, uh, week five too. So we'll see what's in there because next week we're going to do some, oh, princess and fairy tales and things like that for our last week of story times. So I hope you have a great week and we'll see you soon. Thank you.